One thing that I really like about open intelligence and the practice of short moment is that it aligns you with reality. Um, <clears throat> just the way it aligns you with reality, basically. So instead of focusing all our attention and all, all our efforts on, in, on trying to change the content of our mind. When we practice the short moments, we re really start to see something totally different in our life. It's like it's opening up a much more broader perspective that is impossible to see when we just focus on one particular thing or one particular data or datum as we call it. And most of you know that data or datum is just an, a, a way of explaining everything that we can experience in life. And I was laughing when I, when I saw the video here when Candice was speaking about how simple everything gets when we rely on open intelligence. And I said to Nettie here, it's, it's amazing to see how, in my own experience, how complicated life was before, when I was always focusing on and thinking about what I was thinking about. Or just giving the flow of data so much attention, attention all the time. So a very good way to introduce yourself to open intelligence. And, and of course that is very, uh, our experience of that is very special for, very, for every individual. It's like taking a short moment. It's not experienced in the same way for everyone. And I can remember in the beginning when I had that instruction to take a short moment to just stop my thinking. It wasn't that, there wasn't such a big deal for me because immediately I could see that all the thoughts and emotions came back again. So the instruction to take a short moment or, or to stop the thinking, not to take a short moment, to stop the thinking, is just to introduce yourself to that part of you that is totally unrecognized as soon as you only focusing on trying to change the content of your mind. So then immediately the new thoughts pops up again. And for me that thought in the beginning was, I'm not getting it. What's wrong with me? I can't really find this open intelligence in my own experience. What is it? And then gradually I started to see that actually the thought that is thinking, where is open intelligence? is the evidence of open intelligence. So the question and the one asking the question is one and the same. So that yet points to the fact that there is no separation. Whatever we are experiencing in life is actually the dynamic energy of this open intelligence. And that is what makes it so great, this training, because I could see that the approach that I had in life before was basically based on only one thing. The thing that was painful, I tried to avoid. And I was trying to collect things that was pleasant for me. But is it really working? How is that strategy working for you, if you are doing it still? I know that many of you are don't anymore. So then what gradually happens is that we see this non-separation and we start to relax. We start to see more and more that I don't have to fight my experience anymore. I can actually just relax in the midst of even very painful and afflictive states. Things like fear, anxiety, depression. And it's like when we see just one part or one aspect of the data, it's very much like when it's dark we don't see the whole landscape and we can't see the blueness of the sky. We only maybe focus on one of the stars up there. And when we start to think about that star, why is it there or shouldn't be there or, you know, all the stories that we create when we just focus in all our attention on one thing and just instead of seeing the whole, the whole sky and all the stars up there. That is basically what we do with our attention. We just take this wide open awareness, if you like, and just focus on one thing. That's all we see. 
But when the mighty sun of open intelligence arises and the daylight comes, we just see the blueness and we see the whole landscape again. So we start to see not just one aspect of data, we see the whole picture. So what happens then is that we start to relax. We are not so scared anymore of our data. And that was in the beginning quite shocking for me because I could see that I was really holding my mind in a very tight grip. So then when I started to relax more, I was starting, starting to feel and to sense so much more than before. And that was a little bit scary because when I came to the training, I was really looking for the relief from this kind of lifestyle when you're only emphasizing one aspect of the data or the descriptions and labels that we have. But it was also a very a great relief in that because I could see and I could sense that my capability of not only perceiving but deeply feel and sense whatever was going on for me was really what created a sense of stability, mental and emotional stability, and a fearlessness in the midst of afflictive states. So everything, the whole perspective changes for me from trying to avoid things into really welcoming things, and to see that this is really something that is the greatest gift that we can experience. It's actually the source of, of total bliss, I would say, to feel everything totally not just for yourself, but for everyone. That is the birth of compassion. So when you have that fearlessness in your life, and not collapsing into the feeling, then of, of course you feel very connected to everything and everyone. So for myself, I never worry about if it's the other pe people I'm feeling or if it's myself. It's, there is no separation anymore. I just feel whatever I'm feeling totally. I never, I, I never think about is it the other person's data that I'm feeling or is it my own data. I'm just focusing on taking the short moments in those states. And it's amazing to see the compassion and the self-love that comes out of that. The deep connection with everything and everyone. It's really, yeah. It's really delivered everything that I was longing for in life. And can you see the big difference? Instead of living a life where you constantly live in a state of, I would say, fear, because if you have the strategy of just neutralizing your afflictive states, there will always be a sense of maybe they are coming back one day and hit me again. But when you, when you extract the power from those states by letting them be exactly as they are, by having this broad perspective, you can see the whole picture now. It's the most profound, it's just amazing, the most profound experience I've ever had in my life. And it really delivered everything that I was longing for and trying to get from outside, falling in love with someone, having a good career, being someone just came from this simple practice of just resting, letting everything be as it was in every instant of my life. So if you are sitting, for example, I mean, India is such a good place for that. I'm annoyed all the time when I'm here. <laughs> you are walking on the street and someone comes just behind you and, and the horn it makes me mad. But the difference now is that I see this is the perfect place to really create, or not create, you already have it, but experience this stable core that we all have. It's just you're moving into open intelligence when you take the short moments. And then it's just, it's just fun, all the, uh, the anger raging. And I can see the big difference now, it's the third, third season I'm here. The first season I was mad all the time. But now I see the difference. I see the stability that I have in the situations. I'm still mad and angry, but it doesn't bother me so much anymore. It's just I have that stable core now, and then it doesn't matter what. I mean, it's, just, it's just a golden opportunity to test out short moment and see what happens when you're totally mad. 
when you are walking on the street or if you are sitting in a, in a situation in a cafe, for example. But that, of course, doesn't exclude the skillfulness of knowing when to say to someone, this is really annoying, can you please shut up? But you know when you are, where you are coming from. When you ground yourself in open intelligence, you know if you are collapsing into the anger or if you're grounded in open intelligence, this kind of, of, of sense of self-love. and That is also present in the situation, so you know where you are coming from. That is the skillful means in every situation. You just ground yourself in open intelligence, and if you know that you're coming from that place, then you act. And if you don't, it's, then it's better to take the short moments and to stay with the practice. And that is something that I always I always see that in every relationship that I'm in, basically, where I'm coming from. If I ground myself in open intelligence, then I respond out from that instead of just being collapsed into a situation. <laughs>